Oh, um, I've read a very interesting paper. Ah, you you read an interesting paper. It's not really something I know much about, oh. but I think you might be an expert. I'm an expert. Okay, we will see. I'm an expert on everything. Uh, ongoing yeah. habenular activity is driven by four brain networks and modulated by olfactory stimuli. No, no, no. This is what I'm bad at. Everyone tells me about <laughs> it, but I don't know about it. <laughs> uh, so this is a study that just came out by out of the lab of Emery Yaxi. A uh, very nice guy. He's uh, working on zebrafish in the Kavli Institute in Norway, if I remember correctly. Looking at the uh, the homologue of the abenua. So apparently zebrafish don't have the same brains as humans. Oh, really? I yeah, thought they were no. I... <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were just a see-through human, you know? That, uh, that's why you use the zebrafish, right? I, I used to think, just to, just to <laughs> keep it, no, that is apparently wrong. Zebrafish are not exactly like... Uh, for one, they do have an abenula or a habenula homologue, but uh, sorry, when was it? I forgot the. Um, uh, where is it? Yeah. Um, so in the zebrafish, you have the dorsal abenula and the ventral abenula, which are the homologues to the mammalian medial and lateral abenula. Yeah, there, there are two abenulas in the. There are two abenulas. So in the, the mouth. zebrafish, it's the dorsal ventral. In the in humans, it's medial lateral. Okay. You know all about the lateral abenula. You had a paper on it. Yeah. No, I didn't have a paper on it. Oh, you weren't on the paper. Okay. No, I was so a paper on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know something about it. Um. Anyway, so uh, what um. The lab by uh, Amr Yaxi found was, uh, they looked at, um, ongoing activity and how this can be switched so apparently um there are during ongoing activity the abenula will exhibit uh functional clusters and these are driven by the amygdala and the hippocampus and activating those like the amygdala or the hippocampus activates an overlapping population of neurons within the abenula so the abenula functions as a hub between these or receives at least input from these and when a sensory stimulus, stimulus comes in, especially they looked here at odors, which is weird because how do fish smell if they're underwater? That's, well, there's probably some, there can be particles in the water and the fish can detect them, right? Wouldn't that be taste? I would say so. I wouldn't <laughs> smell water. <laughs> it's That's the same thing anyway. Why do they say odor? <laughs> uh, but let's not get bogged down by that. Anyway, uh, okay. so when uh, these odors come in, the abenula functions as a hub and it switches that ongoing activity. So this is sort of a way for, um, you may notice, you know, when you're detecting something like you smell smoke, suddenly, you know, whatever you were doing, you were daydreaming, maybe you were talking on Twitch to people, uh, suddenly you smell something, wait, what's like, you can switch behavioral state very quickly. And, mm. uh, the, apparently the habenula might play a important role in doing that by coordinating activity. Uh, in the hippocampus and um, uh, amygdala. Okay, but so wait, so so it switches the whole brain state. They claim. Uh, so the so they say the habenular circuits act as a major brain up, integrating the structured ongoing activity of the limbic forebrain circuitry and the olfactory information. We demonstrate that ancestral homologues of the amygdala and hippocampus and zebrafish forebrain are the major drivers of going abenular activity. Uh, we also reveal that odor stimuli can modulate the activity of specific abenular neurons that are driven by this forebrain circuitry. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, so it's thereby altering the brain's internal states. Uh, I, it's not entirely clear to me if they mean that when odors come in, the habenula changes state. I don't know what the downstream effects of that are. Um, you haven't told us about the output of the habenula yet. Uh, that's so. because I do not know what the outputs are of the habenula. I assume <laughs> okay. the prefrontal cortex is involved. Uh, no, no, no. Not, not even. <laughs> not that I know. Okay, sorry, I just assumed it's your forte. No, 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 no because this is not no, this is not um, in our lab. This is in Dino Spilates lab, right? Oh, right. right. Sorry. No, my, they my studied uh, GP and habenula, if I'm correct. So it's... Wait, the habenula so the, innovates the globus pallidus? I think so. Oh, so I'm, but I'm very bad at this. So please don't 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> please don't ask me any more questions. <laughs> All right. um, uh, but yeah, so very cool study. It's now out in current biology. Let me um, let me uh, link that for you all. Uh, if anyone wants to read more about the zebrafish labanula and how it is modulated by olfactory stimuli, a very cool study. Um, using in wait. vivo functional imaging. Sorry, I just found it. You should look this up because actually it connects to your striatum favorite region oh, thing. Oh, so it, it modulates uh, oh, it's, decision it's... making. Nice. It's Maybe important. that's actually. <laughs> Straight up. Basal game. Yes. So please look up the connection of the Benla. Don't ask me. 